Hi, this is Brandon from Watches on You, and today we're taking a look at a very interesting Breitling. Now, this watch is the Breitling Reference A13023, also known as the AVI or AVI chronograph. Now, this watch was actually released in the mid 1990s, but I really wanted to highlight it in this video just because of really, frankly, how it looks. This watch is just absolutely fantastic with the vintage elements that it employs, and this watch is actually it was a reissue of a Breitling chronograph from the 1950s, but I think it just has some excellent style elements that might make it quite valuable on the pre-owned market in the coming years. So first I'd like to remind you that we're here at Continental Diamond in St. Louis Park where this watch is actually available on sale pre-owned for $3,600. And that's a fairly reasonable price considering how interesting this watch is compared to some of the other chronographs around this price point. Now, a moon watch in the short term is going to hold its value probably a little bit better than maybe this or something like that, but frankly, I think in the long term, a chronograph like this will become very valuable just because of really how fantastic it looks. I mean, I, I love, I, it's not really minimalist, it's kind of minimalist uh, with the 12 hour markers um, on the ex, on the bezel and it just, it just, I don't know why I think it's so cool, but it, I really, I really like it. So. Uh, getting into the case elements of this watch, it's got a 40.8 millimeter diameter, which is um, slightly small, really, by modern standards, but I think watches are going to start to get a little bit smaller as the kind of vintage trend uh, continues to advance, and I think that this watch, I mean, it, it doesn't look really that small on the wrist, in my opinion, at least on my wrist, which is 6.5 inches in circumference, but I think that uh, this watch just looks absolutely beautiful. So. The movement in this watch is a ETA 7750, which was typical of Breitling's at this time. It has a 42 hour power reserve, which for a manually wound watch would be quite low, but frankly, given that it's automatic, I think that that probably shouldn't be an issue as this is really a daily wearer. So um, I'll demonstrate the operation of the chronograph. So to start the chronograph, you push the top pusher, and I love that red pip at the end of the chronograph second hand. I think it looks very nice, and it's also very, it makes the chronograph very legible. I love the tachometer um, insert on the inside. I think it looks absolutely beautiful, and it's, again, useful. So to stop the chronograph, you push the top pusher again, and then to reset, you use the bottom pusher. Now, getting into kind of the bezel, it has a bi-directional bezel that is actually... Um, there's 24 clicks, but you can see there's 12 hours indicated on the outside, and then you actually have a half hour indicator here, so that would obviously give you 24 clicks around the bezel. It, it feels very smooth, um, but really there's kind of a, gen a gentle thud every time you um, get into one of the graduations. So it, it feels quite similar to a Rolex GMT Master, um, actually very similar to that. So if you know what that feels like, it's it's very similar to that. So getting into the bracelet it has this nice high polished bracelet that is just classic brightling it's very tough including the uh, clasp which is very well made so they they make like press metal clasps brightling does but they're very thick and high quality so i don't mind it as much but like on a seiko i don't really like it when I have, they have press metal i don't think it feels very nice and obviously this is much more expensive than a seiko but still you get my point so um now i'll move on to a wrist shot of this piece and one of the other kind of down uh, kind of pitfalls of this watch is the fact that it only has a water resistance of 30 meters, which is about 100 feet. So you could go swimming in a pool with it, but you really couldn't dive with it or anything like that. Um, but I, it shouldn't be that much of an issue for most people. So again, this watch has a 40.8 millimeter diameter, and that's, again, slightly small for modern standards, especially for a chronograph. But really, it's around my 40, 40 millimeter kind of preference, so I think it looks great. It would look good on most people's wrists unless you had a really large wrist. So if you like this video, please remember to subscribe and share. Thank you.